Dyke Harbor and the Community Presbyterian Church of Springs. We're glad that you're here to worship with us. If you'd like to worship in person, both churches are meeting. Stag Harbor meets at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning and Springs meets at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. We'd love to see you with us in worship if that's possible. Today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the church. It's the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to the church and creating a community. Let us join together and worship God and celebrate the community that is the church. Let us prepare now for worship as we hear the call to worship. The day of Pentecost has come and we are together. Will the works of God be known among us today? We live in the valley of dry bones. Around us and within us is emptiness. God comes to us as a gentle breath or violent wind. Catch your breath, God's breath, and live. There are stirrings deep within us that give us hope. There is a spirit linking us to one another. The fires of love dispel shadows, life shadows. God's spirit comes to give us new life. Surely God is in this place. May the glory of God be known among us today. Let us pray. Spirit of truth, come among us to guide us in the footsteps of Jesus. Amaze and astonish us with the gifts already present among us. Awaken us to the wind and tongues of fire waiting. Fill us with new life and vigorous hope. May our meditations be pleasing to you and our service to others be truly helpful that your great and glorious day may be realized in our midst. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's Addie and Sean Mitchell with your children's message this week. I have something. Here we go, Addie. Time for lunch. Do you know what this is? Noodles. It's macaroni. But you want some? No, because we have to cook it first. Well, doesn't it look so good? Yeah, but we have to cook it. Oh, just taste it. It will taste fine. Here, try some. No, we have to cook it. Well, I know it doesn't look quite like the macaroni that we usually eat, but by looking at it, I think I can tell that it will taste really good. But what do you think it needs? Cook. Okay, we need to cook it. We boil it. Then we strain it, right? And then we eat it. We shake it out. Maybe we add some butter or some cheese. Or some sauce. And we do some other things to make it taste good. I know it tastes good, but we have to cook it. So you think that we can turn this macaroni, this dry, tasteless macaroni, into something really good? Yeah. Oh. Well then, you know what? It reminds me of a story in the Bible. It's the story of the prophet Isaacil. God took Isaacil and showed him a valley that was filled with dry bones. They were scattered all around and there was no life in them. God spoke and asked him, can these bones live again? Well, he didn't know what to say. Oh Lord, he said, only you know the answer to that. Then God spoke to him again and said, speak to these bones and say to them, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Look, I am going to put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. What do you think happened after that, Addie? He turned into a human. Oh. So he spoke the message just as God told him. And as he spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley and the bones came together and formed complete skeletons. Then muscles and flesh formed over the bones and skin covered the bodies. Finally, the winds came and filled the bodies with breath and they came alive. Isn't that amazing, Addie? You look really amazed. <laughs> so let's look at this macaroni again. It is dry. 
and hard and not very good at all. It looks, it looks like nothing can help it. Nothing good can come of it, but we know better, don't we? We know that if we boil it for 10 minutes and add some milk or some cheese or some oil or no some salsa. pasta sauce, we will have something very good indeed. And that's the way it is when we face something that is very hard in our lives. Sometimes it's hard to think about anything good happening or anything good that can happen out of bad situations. That everything is like it was in the valley of the dry bones. But just as we know that this macaroni can become very good, we know that the hard things in our life can become a lot better. Just as God brought life to the valley of dry bones with the breath of his Holy Spirit, God can make bad things better in our lives too. And he will when we trust him for it. So, in addition to our message today about macaroni and dry bones, Sunday school children, did can you open find it? an envelope that looks like this at your doorsteps today? With a message. Or this on? week? With a message from Pastor Linda? Well, if can you I didn't, be on the lookout and we're going to show you what's inside. This is a packet of activities and information about Pentecost, which is Sunday, May 23rd. And I'm going to have Addie help me here. She's going to take a look and show us what's in our packet of things to do. Bubbles! Ooh, everyone loves bubbles. Oh my God. Some red paper. Oh, this is so exciting. What could these activities be? Yes, then. Okay, and then there is a special packet that explains what Pentecost is with some activities that you can do at home with your families. And you can use a bubble. Yes. So if anyone would be interested in receiving a packet and joining our Sunday school family, please reach out to me. You can drop a message below the video or go to our Old Whaler Sunday School Facebook page and visit us. And we would love to have more children in attendance, especially when we go back and meet face to face. So I hope you are all well. But mom, what are we doing with this red paper? Well, we will find out when we look into our little pamphlet that explains all the activities like everyone else will do, okay? All right, so we hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy the beautiful weather and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, 
and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The New Testament lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there was a sound that, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phargia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Today is the birthday of the church, or at least we call it the birthday of the church as we remember the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples in the upper room at Pentecost. Now, Pentecost was a festival for the Jewish people, and Jews from all over had gathered in Jerusalem and were there to celebrate this harvest festival. The disciples were gathered in the upper room as they were told to by Jesus to wait until the gift of God comes. Wait until the Spirit of God falls upon you. Sit and wait. Wait until God's Spirit is alive in you and among you and around you. And so they were waiting. How long they had to wait, they didn't know. But they waited until that day of Pentecost, waited until God would tell them what to do and how to do it, that God would show them the direction they should go and what they should do. And so we call this the birthday of the church because of what happened, because the Holy Spirit came to those disciples and they felt the Holy Spirit in tongues as of fire. And they heard the Holy Spirit as like a violent and mighty wind. And then they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. They spoke in languages that they did not know, but they were important languages because they were the languages of all the people who had gathered in Jerusalem for that Pentecost harvest celebration. And so much had happened, and the wind happened, and the fire happened, and all happened, and so they had to go outside. And they were outside speaking in languages, and everyone heard what they were saying. They heard that they were talking about the mighty acts of God. Many heard what they were saying and believed. They heard what these disciples were proclaiming, and they believed in all that the disciples said. It is said that there were 3,000 people that gave their life to Jesus that day. 3,000 people who believed the disciples and became part of a community that would become the church. And so we celebrate today the church. The church as it began so long ago, that community that came into being on Pentecost Day. We celebrate the church today. And so today is the birthday of the church. I want you to think some about your own birthday and how you celebrated your birthdays in the past. Can you think of your favorite birthday celebration? Maybe it was your, when you were a child and someone gave you a surprise party. Maybe it was in this last year when during COVID, all your friends got together and had a parade in front of your house. Maybe it was when all your family had gathered together to celebrate your birthday. Maybe you can think about the, your favorite gift that you got on your birthday. What was that gift? It might have been when you were a child and you got your first bike. Who knows? But think about your own birthday and how special that day is to you. If you talk to my kids, they all celebrate their birthdays and are excited when their birthday comes and they talk about it before it arrives and make sure everybody knows when their birthday is. They love their birthdays. Today's the birthday of the church. And sometimes when it's our birthday, what we do is look back on the past year, and then we look forward to what the coming year might bring. And so today, on the birthday of the church, we perhaps need to look back on this past year and see what has happened in the life of the church, and then maybe look forward to see what might happen or what could happen in this coming year. So we look back on this past year, this year of COVID, and we think about where the church has been and what we have done. And it's been the most different year of ministry in my ministry, 
It's been a difficult year in a lot of ways. Many of the things that I enjoy doing, visiting people in their homes and in the hospital, having meetings and dreaming about the future of the church, all those things were impossible to do during COVID. It meant we had to use the telephone and other technology in many ways to be able to keep together as the church. And so that's what we tried to do when we couldn't meet during this COVID year. We tried to make the church real, even though we could not gather. Even though that's what is our primary purpose often is to gather together, to hear God's word, to be nurtured and strengthened, and then to go out and do ministry. But how would we nurture the people if we couldn't get together in the same place? How could we continue to be a community of faith when we couldn't gather together and see one another and pass the peace and talk about life and what's going on and what's important to us and where we are hurting and where we need support? How could we be the church? And so we tried to adapt to the situation and we began these online worship services and people did watch those worship services. We tried to keep the ministry and mission of the church going, even though we couldn't gather together. And so we had meetings by Zoom. And some of them worked and some of them did not work. It's difficult to use technology. Some of us are clueless when it comes to how to use the te new technology. Some of us live in a place where the technology just doesn't work, where we have no internet or it's very spotty. So it was difficult to have Zoom meetings. And then there was just communication. What, how would we communicate and what would, would we communicate? It was difficult to keep communication going because we weren't hearing about what was going on and we weren't able to do all of the things that we normally do that we would communicate about. There were no fundraisers, there were no gatherings of the church, there were no parties, there were no rentals of the building, there was not anything really happening. And so it was hard to communicate when most of what we did we couldn't do. But it wasn't all bad. This year wasn't all difficult. We did reach out when people were in the hospital by telephone. We did visit, I did visit people on their porch on occasion. We wanted the children to keep on learning. So each season, I brought packets of activities and readings and books to the children so that they would learn about Advent and Christmas, about Lent and Easter, and about Pentecost. We did try to keep things going. And during the time when we weren't in the building, the buildings got some updating, and that's a good thing. The buildings also got used in a different way by the food pantries. The food pantries had to think about how to give food to people who are hungry because there were more than ever that were hungry. How can we get food to them safely? And so the food pantries had to think about how they would do that and redesign the process of giving out food. And so they did, and they grew and they grew and they grew. And so they handed out much food to our communities that were hungry. There were good things that happened. We learned about technology. We learned about how to use um, technology in a way to further our ministry and our mission. And so we look back on this past year and there are things that were very difficult and things that worked out just fine. So we look at the church and where it's been this past year we look at our community and our world and where it's been this past year, and we see that many people are speaking up and speaking out. We've had the Black Lives Matter movement. We now have Asian Americans speaking up and speaking out. 
We see violence, one person against another. And we worry about that and we wonder how we as Christian people can speak to that, how we can change how we live to make a difference, how we can do something that will make a difference in our community and in our world so that people treat one another as God's people. So we look back at the past year on our birthday, on the birthday of the church, and we also look forward. We look forward to what might be happening as we begin to reopen after COVID. We've begun to gather together for worship again. It's great to see people's faces again and have an opportunity to talk and share who we are and what's been going on in our lives. It's good to see one another. It's good to worship together, to hear the music, to pray together, to hear scripture, to think about who we are and whose we are and how we will live. So it's been great to start to gather together again, but there is still much that is not the same. We don't pass the peace or the offering. We don't sit close to one another and we have to recognize each other with our masks on. But what will happen in this coming year? What are we looking forward to? Phyllis Tickle, a recent theologian, talked about the life cycle of the church. And she talks about the church as having major shifts every 500 years. Every 500 years in the life of the church, there's been something major that's happened that's changed the way the church gathers, that changes the way the church thinks, that changes a lot of what's been going on in the church. And we are at that 500 year mark. And she calls this the church rummage sale. The church rummage sale. Rummage sales, we get rid of things that we don't need anymore, that we don't want anymore. So maybe this year, as we get out of COVID, we can start thinking about what's really important, what we really want to keep, and what might be extra. What might we not need anymore? How can we discard those things that have lost their meaning and purpose? And how can we gather those things that are important to us? Often at your birthday, you look around and think about all the stuff that you have and begin to think about getting rid of some of that stuff that's extra that you don't need. And so we as a church are in this season of major change and upheaval, not just our local congregations, but the church in general. So where are we going? We need to be re relevant, relevant to our community. We look around our churches and we see that most of our members are elderly. We look at the statistics and see that only 45% of people proclaim that they are members of a church or religious organization. Only 45%. So how do we turn this around? How do we move forward? How do we do our mission and ministry in a way that will make a difference in the lives of people who haven't heard the good news? If we look back at Pentecost, what we need to do is to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to be alive and well in our lives. We need to pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And then we need to speak in a way that others can hear, that others understand, so that others can believe. Perhaps we need to think about what our church language is, words that we only use at church 
and come up with words that are more common, that are more understandable. Maybe we need to think about how we pray and pray using different words. Maybe we need to think about our music and how our music speaks to people. Does it, do our hymns say anything to the young people in our community? Do our hymns say anything to people who haven't been in church ever or for a long time? We need to think about these things as we move forward. How can we be the church that speaks a language that others can understand? We also note that if we look at the Acts reading, that the disciples spoke to a variety of people, to all the people that were there, to young people and old people and to slaves and to free and to men and to women. They spoke to everyone. They spoke to people of different culture and different races, of different religions. They talked to all people and they spoke in a way that all people could understand and believe. And perhaps that's what we're called to do as well, to look seriously and deeply about who we are and whose we are and what that message is and how that message can be shared in a way that makes a difference. How do we speak to our world today? How do we share God's love for all people today in a way that makes a difference? What is our mission and our ministry as we move forward? So we look at this birthday celebration and we move forward. And what will this year bring? We're talking about having a communicants class. We have several young people that are willing and want to make that move in their faith to confirm the promises that were made for them at their baptism. We're talking about learning more about vital congregations, our denominations process for becoming a more vital congregation. We're talking about how to move forward, about how to make our congregations vital and dynamic, how to make them relevant to our community. So today is our birthday. And we look at the past, where we've been, where we've been just this past year, and where we're going. Where we've been has given us an opportunity to think about things differently. We had to do things differently this past year. Well, how do we want to do things differently in the coming year? That's what we need to think about today on the birthday of the church when 3,000 people in that original Pentecost celebration turned their lives to God and believed. How do we proclaim the good news so that others will hear and believe? Amen.
us pray. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for this day of celebration when we celebrate the birthday of the church, the beginning of the community of faith that went, that grew and grew and spread all around the world. We thank you, O oh God, for the church universal, and we thank you too for the church in this place, for the people who've gathered here because they believe in you, because they believe that you have created them and called them into mission and ministry. We give you thanks for this community of faith which loves and supports one another, which cares for the world where we live, which seeks to reach out in new and different ways. We give you thanks for this church, O oh God, and we ask that you bless our ministry, that your spirit fill us with new ways of doing the church so that others might hear and believe. As we pray for the church, O oh God, we pray for the world that we live in. We pray for the world where there is violence, nation against nation, and people against people. We pray, O oh God, for your spirit. We pray, O oh God, for your peace. We pray for your love. We pray, O oh God, for the day when we can all realize that all people are created in your image and that you love everyone and that there's nothing we can do to earn your love. Oh God, as we gather together, we pray for all those who are hungry, who are coming to food pantries, who are without employment or homes. We pray, oh God, that out of our abundance, we can continue to share, that we can share in new ways, that we can reach out with our abundance to make a difference in the lives of others. We pray for those who are ill. We know so many, oh God, that are suffering from cancer and other illnesses. We pray, oh God, for healing and wholeness. We also know that there are so many that are still suffering from COVID and its after effects. We pray for them as well. We also pray for those who grieve, who have lost loved ones to COVID and other diseases. We pray, O oh God, for your peace which passes understanding. And we pray that they might remember your promises of everlasting life for those who love you. O oh God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the world where we live, for the beauty of the day. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the earth that provides food for us. We give you thanks for those who farm that we might have food. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who are first responders who help so many people. We thank you for those who are frontline workers who share their time and who make a difference so that we might have what we need. We thank you, O oh God, for the people who give their time and talents and treasures so that the world might have what it needs. O oh God, we lift up to you our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers of need. And we ask, O oh God, that you hear our prayers as we pray them in silence. We pray this prayer and all our prayers through Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
the world and celebrate and remember to look back at where we've been and to look forward to where we're going. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore.